Well, welcome to you. You know, I can say welcome to you, but somebody named Jesus Christ is very, very glad that you want to take time to hear his word and that you have a place within yourself that God has made to be filled with his love. Let's pause with a word of prayer to this wonderful God before we continue. Thank you, Heavenly Lord, for every person that everywhere is seeking you, listening to your word, receiving, and even becoming able to celebrate your love with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today, as you can see, the title is Wonderful Ways for Us. God is, you know, God is for us. I hope we can be for him. Amen. Well, with help, we can. Let me begin with these comments. Some of the wonderful ways of God for us have their beginnings in the Old Testament, and it can be helpful for us to become familiar with them and receive their applications in our lives today. You know, a uh, People are turning away largely from the Old Testament. It's getting uh, to be quite a concern that some think we don't need it anymore. So we're going to look at some of the wonderful teachings from the Word of God here today. There are, of course, many great teachings of God in the early scriptures, but we shall look at only a few now. First one is Deuteronomy 5.33. Let's hear the Word of God. You shall walk in all the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that you it may be well with you. What a, what a loving God. He wants it to be well with you. And that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Thank you, Lord. The scriptures give accompanying words to these in order to build our understanding. Here we are referred to the way which the Lord your God has commanded you. One is in Deuteronomy 10, 12, which is this. What does the Lord your God require from you but to fear, and a word which can mean reverence. Fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul. Of course, for these precious ways to flow from us, they must first be in us, and God gives them to believers. God gives them to believers. He's wanting them to come out from us, so he gives to us to have these. As in Joel 2.29, which is, quote, I will pour out my spirit. Hear God talking to us? I will pour out my spirit. Are you thirsty? God has, a mu has much for us. That was Deuteronomy 5. Let's move to Jeremiah 7.23, which is this way. Obey my voice, and I will be your God. You will be my people and will walk in all the way which I command you, that it may be well with you. He's working, he said, that I may command you. He says that it may be well with you. He's concerned about you. This is our God. He's got everything, but he wants to help to build you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, another important gift of God to build his people is given right here. Did you notice the word to us, obey my voice, from what we just read from Jesus? In fact, that was the first three words, obey my voice. Yes, God was calling his people to seek and actually hear God speaking to them. Hear my voice? Hear God speaking to them. Some say that's not possible. So this is still our Lord's way and is a wonderful way of our Savior to empower, lead, love, and work through us to reach out to others. 
and beyond our natural ways, that beyond what we know ourselves, our natural ways, God seeks to pour supernatural ways in us. He talks, but he talks in a different way than we do. Of course, we must recognize that his wonders do not come through shouting into our ears. His words are simply given spiritually and require receiving through the Holy Spirit which he gives to his precious family. Notice that he, sp he speaks spiritually because, the, and the Holy Spirit is the one who, who brings that spiritual presence into us. So now we add our yes to the Lord's, he has told you, O man, what is good. Micah 6, 8 says, he has told you, O man, what is good. And we just heard some of the good that God has for us. And so we can add our yes to what God has said. Now, we move to Isaiah chapter 30 and two verses 20 through 21, where we read, He, your teacher, will no longer hide himself. We'll get back to that. Isn't that interesting? Your teacher will not, no longer hide himself, but your eyes will behold your teacher and your ears will hear a word behind you. Quote, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or to the left. That's how consistent he is. He saying to us, this is the way. He talks to us, he wants us to hear him. Your, he wants our ears, he said, to hear a word from our Savior. He's reaching out to us in his way. First, we need to notice that our teacher, Jesus, will no longer, as we read, he said he will no longer hide himself. It's explained in John 14, 19 and other places in which Christ explains to the disciples, you will behold me. You will behold me. Now, that's quite an wonderful thing that God is saying here that we will behold him but it's of course it's a different way than we expect this is in the spirit and we will know that Jesus is quote from John 4 14 20 uh, Jesus is in my father Jesus was in father God uh, that's in John 14 20 and if you want to read more about that that can be in John 16, 16 through 17, and other places near that. He also mentions, quote, your ears will hear a word behind you. We will hear God. Now, that this was hard for people to receive. They're expecting the way we talk to one another to hear that. But God is saying, no, no, it's quite, quite different. And so therefore, much, many have not heard from God, but he wants us to hear. So again, if we listen for God through the Holy Spirit, he will hear not naturally, but supernaturally. He has much to say to those who seek him, as you are doing today, hopefully listening to this teaching. In many verses, the Lord calls for us us so that we might do great things through and for him. In Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, he calls us to, quote, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. In all our ways, he said he will make your path straight. Let's follow him in humility. For he, according to his own words, Psalm 25, 9, he leads the humble in justice. We humble ourselves and not try to make it our way, but we'll go God's way. And he teaches the humble his way. That's his word. He's saying he teaches the humble his way. 
those who will not look to themselves, but will listen to God to lead us. He has so much to give us. All right, there's another one, Jeremiah 7.23. This is the last of today's. But this is what I commended them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and you will walk in all the way which I command you, that it may be well with you. Notice this. All of this, what's the purpose in all of this? That it may be well with you. This is the love of God for you. And oh, does this love of God want to embrace you and me and pour in his love and power into us. He wants you and me. All right. Again, in uh, Jeremiah 7, 23, but this is what I commended them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and you will walk in all the way which I command you, that it may be well with you. Well with you. Once again, we hear that God wants us to hear his voice and obey him. God has always wanted us to hear and follow him for our benefit. He wants us to hear him and follow him. Why? For our benefit. He loves us. That is what he shares here in these words, that it may be well with you. Um, we're going to close in just a minute here, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus wants it to be, he will make it well with you who come to him. And we close with 2 John 1, 6. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it.